Today, we're gonna to show you how to take those not so pretty apples and turn them into something amazing. Hey everyone, welcome back to Heartway Farms. We're so glad you're here with us. My name is Annie and this is Julianne and we're in the kitchen today doing something really fun. So if you have a large amount of apples, whether you go pick them as like apple seconds or you have someone who lets you come and pick from their tree for free or a wild tree out back like we have, which is untamed and crazy full of, of apples that are maybe a little blemished, then this recipe is for you and you can give it a try and let us know how much you like it. Today we are making apple brandy or also known as apple cordial or kind of like apple kombucha-ish. So it could be any of these things, a fermented apple drink, okay? So we're gonna share the process with you. It is so simple, but you do have to be patient because it does take a couple months, but let's get started. So I'm just gonna go ahead and start by quartering and de-seeding all of these apples. And you don't have to skin them or anything, just let them be as they are. Even if there's a little bit of blemishing, it's okay. I mean, if there's major spots, you might wanna cut them off, but it's not too bad. And then we are just gonna kind of layer in this jar. We're going to layer our apples, then do a layer of cane sugar, and then a layer of our raisins. And that's all you need for this recipe, which is what's beautiful about it. And uh, we are blessed not only to have, like I said, two apple trees out back in the property that are very unkept and untamed. They're not beautiful apples, but they're delicious apples. So when that happens, this is a perfect recipe or like a, you know, using a crisp. Anything that you don't really care what the apples look like, it's great to use those kind of tainted apples or whatever. We also have an amazing customer who loves to bring us her fallen apples and she gives them to us to feed to the animals. However, that's where all of these apples are from today. And they, they obviously are imperfect, but they're totally amazing and perfect for this kind of recipe. Because it doesn't matter what it looks like. These are gonna ferment and bubble and <laughs> brew and turn into a delicious drink. And then, so you just need the apples, as many as you have. You could do a smaller crock. This is a two gallon crock, but remember that's not gonna yield two gallons. It's gonna yield quite a bit less. And then we have our organic raisins. The raisins are an, an amazing addition to this drink because they carry their own yeast, which is pretty cool. And then we are using organic cane sugar as well. Those three ingredients, amazing, easy, simple. You just have to be able to put it somewhere long-term for like three, four, five months. And as Julianne is prepping this, um, our plan with this, um, because we don't necessarily love alcoholic beverages, but we do love things like kombucha where they're slightly fermented, but not to the point where it's a high alcohol content. So with this apple brandy, we're gonna see, because we haven't made this before, we're gonna watch it and try to catch it at that bubbly, <laughs> beautiful fermented stage where it's similar to like a kombucha. Um, but otherwise, um, we're gonna test it out and see how it goes. A lot of people will let it go all the way until it's fully fermented and um, past that bubbly stage. So, all right, are we ready for a layer of cane sugar? I think so. Yeah, that looks good. And there is no exactness to this Probably recipe. like a quarter to a half a cup on that. I'm just kind of eyeballing it. Does that look pretty yeah. good? Like I said, this is our first time making it, so we'll update you as we go. But it's um, so simple. That's okay. Good. You only need a little bit of raisins. I've yeah. actually, I've actually made homemade yeast like for making bread with raisins before. That was a fun process. Yeah, their raisins are amazing, and we're using organic raisins just for that reason because they maybe don't have the same amount of like uh, chemicals pesticides. or pesticide sprays on it, any of that stuff. So anyway, this is going to be a process we're going to repeat until this is nice and full, and we're going to jam get it as full as we can. We're going to jam it down. So let's fill up this crock. Okay, our crock is full of these beautiful apples. We're gonna do a sprinkling of sugar on top and a few more raisins. And then this crock is what we would call done. So what we're going to do now, I'm gonna move these scraps just over here for right now, is we're gonna take some plastic wrap. Maybe. Yeah, we are. Just gotta get it to release. We're gonna take some plastic wrap and seal this up. 
And then this crock actually comes with a lid. I really like these. That we get them, they're Anchor brand and we get them at Walmart. Um, we've used these for water glassing eggs and doing all sorts of things. So anyway, we're going to lid this because you are shooting for airtight. Okay. And here's the deal. What we're going to do, because this will start to, you know, start the fermentation process almost immediately. It will start creating juices because of the sugar in the apples and the sugar in the raisins, all of it. So this might even reduce by tomorrow or the next day. And if that's the case, we're going to add in a few more apples to top it all the way to the top. It will be the most successful if you don't have a gap here where oxygen can hang out and cause molding and you know damaging not the fruit. Not good stuff. <laughs> right, not that kind of mold, that's not what we want. So anyway, I'm gonna go put this and store this in a dark, cool place, probably in my dry storage room. And then we're gonna check it tomorrow, top it off, and then literally cover it back up with plastic wrap, cover it with our lid, and let it go. <laughs> and keep hands off of it, except for checking it every month or so until we get it to the right fermentation where we're happy with it. We're not looking for high alcohol content at all. We're looking for bubbly and beautiful. So we're hoping to catch it before it goes on to the actual cordial end of the deal. So we have one crock. We're gonna do the same exact thing with another crock. Have our second crock filled. We're gonna do the same thing. Here, you wanna hold that, Jules? Get this covered up. We're gonna lid it. So just, again, we are going to check these tomorrow, midday, and see if we have lost any volume, which we most likely will tomorrow or the next day, we'll see. But then once we're filled up after that initial settling, and we're gonna make sure everything goes about as, you can see how full it is. It's almost all the way to the top, even bowing a little bit. But we still have a good seal at the top. Um, once we're full, after checking, you know, tomorrow or the next day, then we're gonna just let this go. And without messing with it too much, we're just gonna watch it. And I think when we start seeing a nice little bubble, <laughs> whatever, we'll taste it and see. We're kind of shooting for that kombucha phase, but even if we let this go all the way to full fermentation uh, for four months, five months or whatever, it's still a very low alcohol content, just a delicious treat drink. Also in the process of fermenting, you might get some portions or a small layer of mold on the top of the fruit. It's just part of the process and it's no big deal. It's easy at the end, you just kind of scrape off that top part and discard it or feed it to the chickens or whatever, but don't worry about that. Um, at the end, we're gonna strain this all out anyway and just have the liquid in the end. So it's no big deal if you have a little bit of mold on the top towards the end. We're really excited to try this out. Make sure you subscribe to follow along with the process. We will keep you updated and yeah, this is gonna be fun. So we hope you guys have a blessed day and we'll see you soon.